Hi folks, welcome to a very condensed intro to ISO 21448 SOTIF. What is SOTIF? Well, it stands for Safety of the Intended Functionality and means, in simplified terms, is my system behaving safely in all situations? So first, the well-known ISO 26262 Functional Safety Standard is analyzing your system based on the fact that something inside of it breaks. 26262 systematically goes through all the components of the system, calculating their probability of failure and derives the hazard caused by that failure. Adding assumptions for severity and controllability comes up with an Automotive Safety Integrity Level, or ASIL, rating that gives you guidance and requirements for the functional safety of your system. Yet there is a chance that your system creates a hazard caused by factors from the outside, such as environmental influences or misuse. The safety of the intended functionality of your system is influencing the entire V-cycle of development. Sort of starts with the safety analysis and additional consideration and hazard analysis and risk assessment. And from there, it finds its way into system requirements similar to ISO 26262 functional safety hazard mitigations. The difference here is that 26262 implements mitigations for failures happening, while SOTIF requires to prevent hazards created through misuse or limitations by design. Requirements are then broken down into system architecture in a known fashion. The same goes for unit design, implementation, and unit test. The verification of SOTIF requirements is no different than the verification of any other requirement, since it's about to verify the correct implementation. Now something new gets introduced in the validation phase. Here you divide the test scenarios in four groups, known and unknown, safe and unsafe, where the unknown and unsafe scenarios are naturally becoming the challenge to tackle. While safe scenarios in the area 1 and 4 do not require design changes and therefore no additional verification and validation, unsafe scenarios add those steps. Area 2, or the known unsafe scenarios, are part of the verification. Evidence is to be generated that the system and components such as sensors, algorithms and actuators behave as expected for known hazardous scenarios and reasonably foreseen misuse, which are derived from the safety analysis. The validation with regards to SOTIF is covering the area 3, the unknown and unsafe scenarios your system can encounter. This is the most challenging step since those scenarios are, as the name suggests, unknown. The way it works is that you have to explore more and more scenarios during the validation and successively move them into either area 1, where no further action is required, or into area 2, so they will be covered by your verification. The goal is to minimize the scenarios that are unknown. To achieve this, you can either develop more and more scenarios yourself or you utilize industry source databases. Those databases uh, help to create a large set of scenarios and like that, reduce the number of unknowns. Since the number of unknown scenarios is infinite, you cannot achieve 100% test coverage. So the release will be defined by risk evaluation based on the coverage and results available rather than by a traditional pass-fail criteria. IProcess can help to guide you through early stages of interaction with SOTIF, as well as support you to create processes, strategies, and documentation throughout the entire vCycle. Feel free to reach out with questions or requests.